Hi everyone, and welcome to another video by BioTeach, this time focusing on how we calibrate microscopes using the IP Squatacule. This video is relevant for A-level biology for the cells topic. You will hopefully get a chance to use the microscopes in the lab, and will get a chance to practice how to measure cells. Measuring and counting objects to be viewed under a microscope requires precisely marked measuring equipment Two commonly placed pieces of equipment are the graticule and the hemocytometer. This video is focusing on the graticule, which is used to measure the size of an object. A graticule is placed in the eyepiece of a microscope, and sometimes these are called eyepiece micropenses or eyepiece graticules. It's usually about one millimeter long, divided into 100 equal units. A graticule is used in combination with a stage micrometer to work out the size of the object being viewed. The stage micrometer is a slide with a scale that's exactly one millimetre long and is also divided into 100 divisions, which means each division is 0.01 millimetres. This is placed on the stage of the microscope. The stage micrometer allows the graticule to be calibrated so that a precise scale can be calculated at each magnification of the microscope. This image here shows you the microscope with an eyepiece location and the example of the stage micrometer. There are various steps you have to complete to be able to calibrate your eyepiece graticule. The first step is to align the eyepiece graticule with the stage micrometer. Once they're on top of each other, you need to be able to count how many divisions on the eyepiece graticule correspond to a set of stage micrometer divisions. At this stage, you might forget which one is which when you're looking down the microscope, so you could rotate the eyepiece a little to remind yourself if you need to. In this example, my stage is the scale in red and the eyepiece is the scale in blue, and I can see that every 10 stage micrometer divisions are around 21 eyepiece graticule divisions. The next step is to calculate how big one division is on the eyepiece. For this, we need to know how long every small division is on the stage micrometer. So you can check the size of your micrometer by looking at the label on the side itself. If it is one millimeter long in total, then every 10 small divisions is 0.1 millimeters long, and every small division is 0.01 millimeters long. This scale here shows you a bit more of a close-up if you struggle to picture it from the previous slide. We have said that 10 micrometer divisions were 21 eyepiece graticule divisions. And I've set this up a bit like ratios so we can easily work out what each division is. So if 10 micrometer divisions were 21 eyepiece graticule divisions, and we know that 10 was 0.1 millimeters long, then we know that 1 must be 0.1 divided by 21, which is 0.0048 millimetres to 2 sig fig. Now, we don't want to work with these inconvenient decimal places. They're quite ugly numbers to work with. And so we can convert this to micrometres by multiplying by 1,000. So 0.0048 becomes 4.8 micrometres. Essentially, what we're saying is that each division is 4.8 micrometers. So now we're in a position to be able to measure the sample at the magnification. You can measure your specimen using the eyepiece micrometer and convert the number of eyepiece micrometer divisions you've counted to an actual length. So if I'm looking at some cheek cells, as you can see on your video now, I can see that the length of one cheek cell is around 16 units long on the eyepiece graticule. I now know that one eye piece micrometer division is 4.8 micrometers long. So this cell must be 16 times 4.8, which means 76.8 micrometers long. Don't forget that you have to calibrate the eyepiece graticule for every magnification you use, and you also have to recalibrate it if you use it for a different microscope. I hope that's been super useful for you. I know it's a short video, but if you follow those steps, the next time you have a microscopy lesson, you should be able to calibrate your microscope with ease. So that's all I have for you on this particular subject. My next video is based on these types of microscopes where I'll be comparing the optical microscopes to the electron microscopes, and it will also cover some past paper questions as a part of that. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you have any questions about this topic, please leave me a comment below this video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Bye for now.